Hi guys, um, I'd just like to do this morning a little uh, tutorial about using the layer mask. Layer masks <coughs> are a powerful and non-destructive way in which we can combine images together to create <coughs> a composite image. So <coughs> as you can see here, I have several layers on the screen and I want to you know, remove their backgrounds <coughs> to sort of feature them against this sky now. <coughs> Uh, surely I could use my eraser tool, but that would be what we call a, a destructive edit. A destructive edit, that means we're deleting pixels. So what I'd like to do is remove that, but always allow myself the facility to repair it or restore it in some ways. And the layer mask is the correct method for removing backgrounds. So to do that, and I'm going to be talking about this foremost object. I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layers panel <clears throat> and I'm going to turn on this little icon here. That is my layer mask icon. So boom, off I go. And nothing essentially happens immediately. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is apply paint, if you like, to the layer mask. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you're not on the image, you are on the mask. It's a very important distinction. So as you can see, I can toggle between the two. Now, when I'm on my layer mask, I can now use my brush. And the shortcuts for making your brush bigger and smaller are the square brackets next to the letter P. And with my black paint selected, I will be able to hide that area behind or hide parts of the area. Toggling back, I can restore that image here. So <clears throat> this is essentially what we'll be doing. So toggling between black and white, I can hide or show parts of my image. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring him all back because I'm making a bit of a meal about there. So we're back to square one, hiding and showing using black paint. Now I'm going to cut this out, but I'm actually going to use a fairly hard edge brush. So I, I would like to have a very hard edge brush. That looks better. And I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and I'll be able to cut that out. One great trick that I often tell my students <coughs> when you're masking, painting or anything like that, pressing X on your keyboard, as, as I'm doing right now, toggles between the two foreground and background colours. And that's going to be really handy, holding X or clicking X toggles between the foreground and the background colour. So my brush is okay. I'm going to change my settings for my brush just quickly. So as you can see, I've got this sort of bit funky looking brush. It's not quite what I'm after at this point. Um, very often times with the brushes, <clears throat> um, and I'll, I'll do that again. So in the white box that I'm clicking here, I have a series of options. This idea of spacing, um, uh, I don't want that. I'm basically <clears throat> turning that brush down to have no spacing. I want it hard. And what I'd like to do is just tell my brush to be, I'm just shaping the brush if you like, more like a cutting edge. And if you've ever <coughs> painted uh, uh, around window sills and things like that, you'll find that <coughs> you've got a nice hard edged brush. So um, I'm gonna kill that. And as you can see with my brush set up in this particular way, it's just a better tool for me to use it's more um, appropriate, I guess, if you like. And you can see that I've, I've got a nice cutting edge like that. And as again, as I tell most of my students, cut in just a little bit around the edges. Um, one thing I also, yep, I'm cutting through there. Um, so then I'm painting away in this area and it's, it's not deleting, it's actually just hiding. So as you can see, the, the way that I have my brush set up, it's very easy to sort of get into those little tiny edges without me changing the brush as often. Um, so we can go through here, removing that part there, not bad. And you're always cutting in just a little bit, like so. Um, <clears throat> another thing you might consider doing is um, rotating your canvas from time to time. So at the moment, I'm, I'm just painting like so, but hitting the, the, the R key, the letter R on your keyboard, and just holding and going allows you to just toggle your, uh, your screen around. I've just hit the letter R and I'm going back to my brush, B for brush, and that just allows me to get into 
all these little tiny areas, which I probably couldn't do very easily, uh, the way that the brush was initially set up. <coughs> just a great way to cut things out. I, I, I do like to use this tick, just rotating my canvas instead of the brush all the time. There we go, I might rotate my canvas again. Whoops. B for brush, back to brush. And so without changing my brush all the time, I can pretty much keep my brush the same size. I don't know. So it's really a great little technique. <clears throat> like so I can just go through here. And rotating your canvas, R for rotate. And just hit your space bar, you can move it around. Rotating around till it feels right. B to, uh, to instigate the brush again, and I can go through my brush like so. Now, this is the most accurate method. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a more automated method in a moment, but as long as you know that by toggling between the black and the white, cancel, toggling between the black and the white, I can restore some of the background and I can sort of take it back out again. I'm going to go and paint this guy out. So that's the idea. Um, what I might do is I might just pause this video while I remove the rest of the background. So I'm just going to pause that for a second. Hi guys, I'm back. So I'm nearly there. I'm nearly cut out this guy, but I'm going to show you another technique to help you perhaps to speed things along. <clears throat> I'm going to use my lasso tool. And uh, lasso tool is a beautiful tool. Um, it's just so versatile and I think a lot of people don't quite get it, but I'm just going to use the basic top lasso tool. That for me is the only tool you're going to need really. And the key to it is that you must hold your finger on the options key, option key. That means I can click and designate and create curves and hard edge, sharp curves or sharp edges or straight edges, I beg your pardon, and smooth curves. So for me, it is a super powerful tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw like so, some of these edges that are a little bit trickier. And I can just go through here and I can have that little section isolated. And that means I can brush those out and I'm only brushing it within the edges or within the selected area. And that is a really great tip technique for when you're masking. So that's your tool. You've got my option key pressed down. You must keep the option, your finger pressed down on the option key. And that's just going to help you to, um, you know, be a little bit more accurate. And it's very hard to get it in all those areas with the brush by hand. So as you can see, I'm just clicking and holding, clicking and clicking and clicking and holding my finger now so I can create smooth or curved edges and hard edges. Very, very nice technique. So they're all isolated. I can go back to my brush, B for brush. And it just makes this thing a little bit easier to do. So I'm nearly there. Go too much further. Let me see how long it's going. That looks pretty good. R for rotate. And you can uh, reset the view to back to square one. So there we go. He's cut out pretty well. I've missed a little spot up there, but I can go back and get my um, layers. Make sure my layers are gone. There they are. And get my brush again. My brushes. There they are. Good. And I can start to knock them out now. Um, that's fine. He's good. Now I'm going to show you a more <clears throat> automatic or more automated way to do this. Um, Beautiful. Um, we have this other guy here, this other fish. I'm going to hide that first one. So I've got this other guy here. Now, I'm going to do this in a more automatic fashion. Now, by that, I'm going to make a selection, potentially with my quick selection. Okay, so my quick selection tool is probably the tool I want to use for this. And one thing I'll say, just remember to hold your caps lock down or at least understand that the caps lock is going to hide or show the profile of your brush. And <clears throat> if you don't see the profile of your brush, it's a bit difficult to use. So I'm just going to get my little selection tool into his fin here, like so. <clears throat> and 
and he's pretty good. Lost a bit of that. Option to remove from the selection. That's okay. So I've made my selection of my shark. Made my selection of my shark on that layer that I'm intending to use. And I'm gonna hit the mask. Um, and there you go. That's an automated or quick way to do the mask. Now, one thing I'll warn you with that particular method or that particular uh, way, um, it sometimes will not be as accurate. You can see up here, it's not as accurate as it might have been if I did it by eye or did it by hand. Uh, the human eye is the best judge of you know what needs to be selected and what doesn't need to be selected. In this case, it did an okay job, but be mindful that when you use that selection and mask method, uh, you, it might tend to be not as accurate as if you had done it by hand. Um, there's your masking setup. I've got my two guys cut out in a completely non-destructive way uh, with a layer mask. Layer masks are amazing and cool and very non-destructive. Uh, great tool for the designer. Look, I hope that helps and um, I'll see you in class.